How much did you want to work? Not at all. Not at all, really. I, 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 I think everybody knows that one of the reasons I sort of stopped working was because I wanted to be with my sons. I didn't want to leave them. When you got there, first day of shooting, everybody reports, get out of makeup, all that first day stuff. What was it like when you walked in and realized you were going to have to stand in front of the machinery and do it? Exactly the same. Nothing's changed. I mean, many things have changed in pictures and technically everything's progressed a great deal, but you're still just as scared and it's the same, you know, noth nothing different, really. All right, why just as scared? Now, here is somebody mm. who has as much ability and as much success f following on the ability that anybody's had in this business in, you know, forever. And yet you say you're just as scared. How is that possible? Any kind you know, I was perhaps not born to do this job. Any kind of personal appearance or, you know, putting myself on display has always been scary. Getting out in front of... I'm scared <laughs> now, David. <laughs> How comfortable are you watching yourself on the screen? Terribly uncomfortable. Always have been. I've always gone to see my rushes because I felt I should, because I thought maybe there's something I can still correct, you know. But I... I I'm terribly critical of myself. I don't like what you see. What I see. And why that's why it's all such a miracle to me, because obviously, if I've been successful, the audience, the people see something that I don't see. If you could change anything about yourself, what would it be? I'd like to have had smaller feet. I, I hate having big feet. And my friends have pretty feet and wear such pretty shoes. And I've what? But are they, they're not really, they don't really <laughs> look, no, but they don't really look that big. I remember years ago, my mother said I looked like olive oil. You know, uh, Popeye's girlfriend. <laughs> Thin legs and big feet. Are there things, you know, in all the, year, the, char of the characters that you've played, have you ever thought about playing a bad guy? I mean, playing somebody really... A bad girl, maybe. Or a bad girl, yeah, bad, <laughs> bad girl. <laughs> Oh, if the part's good, sure, why not? I've never been offered a bad guy. Yet. I was a thin girl, terribly thin during the war, because little by little there was practically nothing to eat. And when the war was over and rations started, you know, pouring in, I started to eat. By the time I was 20, I was tubby. That's the, a big difference. Tubby? And then, little by little, I thinned back to my old self. Tubby? It was, you know, I used to eat my way through a whole pot of jam and things like that. I really was, I was food mad. Disciplined. How disciplined were you? Very, I think, because I had a terribly disciplinarian upbringing. My mother was very, very much of a disciplinarian, rather strict. And I went from that to, to a Russian ballet training with a marvelous Russian teacher. Let me interrupt a second. The, the Netherlands wait, raised in Holland, right? Right. But then you were in England. Right. I was born in Brussels. I lived in between Brussels and England until I was about 10. Then I spent the war years, actually in all eight years, in Holland, after which I went back to England to work. How many languages did you speak? A bit of English, French, Dutch. Italian. How, how disappointing, or how what, disappointed are you that you didn't get to be Margot Fontaine? Something that you didn't, as much as you loved ballet as a child, as a young That's young a person. very good question, because deep down it was my dream, really was, as a child already, you know, ballet, ballet, ballet is what I love most. And... Um, I can't say today how disappointed I am because I've had so much good fortune and everything. I've been given so much not becoming a dancer. And I think the world of ballet was spared me, but I still get a, get a great lump in my throat. I get terribly moved by dancing because deep down, it's something that I really loved so much. What do you wish you had done a little differently as you look back over things? Obviously, I wouldn't have done the mistakes and the, you know, um, I can't say I wish I hadn't been in Holland during the war, which was a terrible experience, because it, it was finally very enriching. And I, you know, 
learned a lot for the rest of my life. Or all my, whatever I've suffered, has helped me later on. So you can't say I wish I hadn't made any of the mistakes, you know. May I mention a couple of movie titles to you and just whatever comes to mind, would you? Fair Lady, how much did you want the part? Very much. Very much, I think. You know. Um, you say what the first thing I think of is flowers. That those first shots on the screen with all the peonies and the roses and, you know, Covent Garden. I've never liked words very much. I'm not very, I don't, don't deal with them very well. I love music. I love dancing because you could do it all to music, which sort of takes you out of yourself. And what was great about My Fair Lady is that every other scene was to music, either sung or dance, I think. And in that sense, it was perhaps one of the easier pictures to do. Nun's story. The most unusual experience I've ever had. Why? Unusual because it was very, very different. First of all, Fred Zinnemann is a perfectionist. And to be a nun, he had me locked into convents. To be a nurse, he had me witness operations. To do the picture, we were in darkest Africa, in the Congo. And it was marvelous. Roman holiday. I think back at it very emotionally because thanks to Roman Holiday, thanks to William Wyler, thanks to Greg Beck, an awful lot happened to me. Breakfast at Tiffany's. That's the picture that's easiest for me to look at. Um, there's something about me in that which I'm least embarrassed by. How do I look? If you could change anything about yourself, what would it be? Um... I'd like to be 10 years younger. Those are the years I'd like back. The last 10? Not so much for what's happened then, but I mean, to have a little more time. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't care about getting older. And I, I don't care in that sense. I mean, you know, it happens to everybody. I'd love a little more time.